Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Yeah, all of our guests today are sponsored by, there you go, Skipper Auto. Yes. Supporting Canadian fishing families through a revolutionary seafood buying experience. Check them out online at skipperauto.com. Canucks lose 2-1 in Ottawa. Uh, same two teams Wednesday in, in Ottawa, 2.30 start. Uh, we're joined now by a man who did the game uh, yesterday for Sportsnet, uh, Cheech, John Garrett. How are you, sir? I'm good, Donnie. I'm good. How are you? Very well. Very well. Long time uh, no That's talk good. to you. You're looking great, by the way. Yeah. On the television, Oh, thanks. So are, you. so are you. So are you. Your hair. Well, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> no comment. No comment <laughs> okay. on the hair. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I might have lost a, a strand or two. There, there, there's that. But you are looking <laughs> well, good. I was thinking the because it was the anniversary of that uh, Slay the Dragon thing. Uh, yeah. Your hair was way better back then. Oh, it was. And uh, you and I at Valky every day oh. doing that show, the playoff show, and oh. we'd come down and Kathy Barnes was our boss. Yes, and, yeah. Uh, it, it was just, and Valky was always so prepared for it. Yeah. <laughs> it was, he had good hair, though. Uh, he had very oh, he had good, still hair. does. He uh, had uh, great hair. Still and does you and I work. trying to have uh, Alki, the male model, always <laughs> dressed to the nines and always in great shape. And then you and I. Yes, yeah, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I had better toupees back then. All right, Cheech, uh, the Canucks lose. What stood out for you last night, Canuck-wise? Uh, well, to me, that's the first time that they really, really looked like uh, they had. And... Fortunately, I've not, I haven't had COVID yet, mm. and uh, and I'm saying yet just because it's going around. I've had my yep. vaccine and all that kind of stuff, but uh, they looked like a team, especially uh, in the third period when uh, Nils Hoaglander missed those two chances, and uh, then after that, they had one shot in the first 12 minutes of the third period, and it was from outside the blue line. They just looked like they had nothing left. Uh, they looked like and Ottawa flew three time zones too, but Ottawa hadn't had uh, a month off uh, and not even be able to skate, not be able to go and work out, not stay in shape. And uh, the league says, okay, uh, you're ready to go. And uh, the league was going to have them play until JT Miller spoke out. And uh, one day after they got back, well, okay, your heart's okay. And, and you're not going to hurt yourself, but you got, no energy it's like going to uh training camp and not having training camp but start the season on the first game and and expect to be up with everybody else and uh give the canucks credit for the way they played against the Leafs and the adrenaline mm -hmm. and uh the leadership they had but uh i thought last night was the first time that you saw it it's hard to be really critical of them and uh, not only physically do you just look exhausted but mentally some of the plays they made uh, the passes the cross ice passes trying to get through two guys they uh, JT Miller trying to go one on three yep. and uh, it's just uh, I think last night was the first time that we really saw a team that uh, had gone through what they've gone through and the result was right there on the ice okay teach you mentioned this but um, all that I agree with but then how do you explain the two games against the Leafs which were so impressive Oh, like, to me, it's it's the pride and and the attitude of of the players involved, uh, Bo Horvat, uh, Braden Holtby, and uh, it, okay, we know how we feel, we know what's going on, and uh, we're not going to be embarrassed. And you look at the way they played, and uh, they just dug down and and did everything they could. And uh, did they deserve to win both those games? Uh, no, not likely. Braden Holtby, the goalie stole at least one of them probably both of them but they scored and and they really competed as hard as uh, you, you would see a team compete that had been in training and was fighting for a playoff spot uh, but you knew there was going to be a letdown just because of the physical stuff that they've gone through and now you're seeing it at least we saw it last night hopefully they can get it back but uh, you've you've got no chance to practice Travis has, has talked about it, that uh, they're doing most of their training now in their pregame skates. 
hmm. because uh, you have to manage uh, the health and uh, you look at the minutes the guys are playing and uh, Quinn Hughes, give him credit because he's playing 25 minutes a game. But uh, Alex Edler and Tyler Myers and uh, watch them kill penalties and in the middle of the season when the Canucks were playing well, uh, they got on that little run there. Uh, Myers and Edler were killing every penalty for almost the full two minutes. And now it's uh, Schmidt and Hamannick come out after a minute. They change. Uh, Sutter and Mott go out to kill a penalty, and they're out there for 35 seconds, and then they change. Whereas before, uh, when they were in shape and, and yep. physically and mentally on it, they'd be out there for most of the penalties. Hey, John, nice to see uh, you. Levy's back uh, in the lineup. Uh, he's, he's gotten back in uh... – he got a goal last night. Do you see, uh, is there enough sampling that you've seen where he can be an everyday uh, player and, and keep moving up that lineup in your eyes? Uh, I I haven't seen enough yet. Although uh, he, he's poised, he, he looks calm, he makes some plays that I question at times, and uh, fortunately right now they've got him playing with Tyler Myers, who and Myers is playing very well, so... Uh, I think he can be uh, just because he looks like he, he's got the confidence uh, to belong, whereas some of the guys that I've seen uh, just play a game or two. But Yulevi is going to get a uh, longer chance just because of his draft position. He's going to get a longer look. But uh, you look at the guys that Canucks have, uh, do, you, do you think Alex Edler is going to come back? Well, mm. That's a question mark. But you've got three defensemen for sure already there next year. Yeah, and, and, and then uh, do you re-sign uh, Hamannick? So you've got Myers, uh, Schmidt, and, and Quinn Hughes. And then uh, if you re-sign Travis Hamannick, so there's four. So now you've got the two spots, and, and you've got uh, Chatfield and Levy yeah. and uh, Rafferty and Rathbone, and, and then you have to – let those guys fight it out in training camp to be the final pairing. John, uh, VC started in the top six last night. He ended up with two shifts in the third. He's got no goals in eight games. What do you see with VC? Because they got to make a decision on him to bring him back or not. Why is he not as productive as they thought he would be when he got here? Well, do you really think they thought he'd be that productive? Right. I, I think they. I think they just. Uh, went on a flyer and said, yeah. okay. Yeah, give him a chance. Uh, give him a chance. Give him a chance. And uh, the same with Travis Boyd. And uh, You go up and down, and uh, I was listening to Corey Hirsch on the way back uh, last night after the game, and he was talking about, well, okay, this is the time of the year where uh, it's not guys who are uh, trying just to uh, impress. They, they have to try and impress because they won't be back. This is the time where the audition starts now. And uh, you look at Jimmy Vesey, and uh, has he done enough that the Canucks would be interested in re-signing? Okay, well, Cheech. Oh, sorry, go do ahead. Go ahead. So? Do you think so? I, I, he's not. Uh, he panics with the puck. That's what I, I, I see a, a lot of. But, hey, Cheech, before we let you go, i got to ask you this. On the broadcast yesterday, you mentioned how, you know, now teams will have a third goaltender available somewhere in, in the building. You said on the broadcast yesterday that back in your day with the Canucks, your third goaltender was Ron DeLorme. Have I got that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, they didn't. They never had a third goalie. Like they yeah. never had some guy that they could call and say, "You'll be at the game and and you'll be the guy." So if both guys got hurt, they there was one guy that uh, would be designated. And every now and then he'd throw the equipment on in practice and go out like once every two months, and the guys would take shots at him. And uh, Ron Delorme was our guy. <laughs> Why Ron? Did he obviously had some? He had some uh, background in minor hockey as a goaltender. I would well, probably, probably, yeah. and, okay. and a lot of guys think they could do it. Yeah, you know, everybody. <laughs> oh, I can play goal. A lot of you do is just stand there. Come on. Oh, I played ball hockey goalie. I can play goal. <laughs> yeah, <good laughs> How many luck with guys that. have done that? I mean, Matthias Olin was. I used to love hanging around Matthias Olin because. He, you go on the road and you'd be watching a football game or something, and he'd be watching a place kicker. And anybody could do that. Anybody could kick a thirty-yard <laughs> field goal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tennis players. Oh yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Just, oh man. 
We're all we're all like that. Hey, Cheech, uh, good to have you on the show for the first time. We'll get you back uh, again soon. Thanks so much for doing this. Well, my pleasure, and it's always great to see you guys back and uh, back on TV. And uh, uh, you guys are so good. Uh, you deserve to be back. Yeah, we're right back at you, Cheech. Thanks so much. Appreciate <laughs> okay, it. Okay, thank you.